Good evening. So this evening I wanted to look at this idea of being in sacred service. I thought today being Veterans Day, a day that's reserved to honor those who've been of service to our country, willing to make the supreme sacrifice to call forth that hero in them to even be willing to sacrifice their lives for us. And, you know, I think we're always moved when we hear of individuals who are willing to make great sacrifices for the good of others. I mean, there's something about that really, really touches our hearts, you know, whether it be in the manner of those who are willing to make sacrifices to protect our freedoms as, you know, those whom we're honoring this evening, or, you know, just the myriad ways that people make sacrifices such as, you know, the firefighters who put their lives on the line in our state recently, uh, or other first responders. A few months ago, I was on a Zoom session with my youngest sister, Danielle, in Vancouver. And right around seven o'clock, I started hearing some noise in the background, and she asked me, can you hear that? And I said, yeah, what is that? And she brought her laptop out, um, outside her place, and you know, I could hear the, the noise really loudly. And I learned that uh, Vancouver had adopted a ritual that I guess began in Italy and Spain, that at 7 p.m., locals just go out and start making a lot of noise, similar to what we do, say, on New Year's Eve, when it hits the new year, to honor all the healthcare professionals who were you know, putting themselves on the front lines to you know, help individuals suffering from the coronavirus. And I just remember how, how that touched my heart to, to hear that, what a beautiful idea that was. I think it, it speaks to the idea when people make those kinds of sacrifices of moving beyond the sense of me my needs, what I want, what I need in life, to being willing to give to something larger. I think in science of mind, we would say that it reflects or it demonstrates the principle of interconnectedness, of how we all are interconnected on the unseen side of life. That you know, while we each exist as an individualized expression of God. And we certainly want to honor the unique ways that God's nature is expressed through us that may be different from others. We also remember that all our human suffering, all the negative conditions in the world arise from the sense of separateness, of thinking of ourselves as individuals separate from each other, separate from that one source of all good that is God. And that is really an illusion. We can never truly be separate from God or separate from each other. You know, in various uh, philosophies and in the realm of psychology, uh, there's this acknowledgement of the fact that looking for ways to be of service to others to make sacrifices maybe in order to uh, do something good for others is beneficial, not only to those whom we are serving, but to ourselves. It doesn't deny the value of self-care, okay? So I wanna be clear about that. It's not that we should never be thinking of caring for ourselves, of making sure that we take care of ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually. You know, there are times uh, that we might find ourselves needing to give incessantly out of some sense of lack in ourselves that we just need others to value us, to approve of us for what we're giving. So we're always trying to prove ourselves by giving and giving. That's, that's not the kind of giving I'm talking about. Because I think there's also a tendency for us to focus on ourselves, on our needs, that's actually coming from a place of lack. Feeling like we're not enough, that 
we don't have enough, and you know, I need, I need, I need to be happy. And that sense of not having enough or being enough creates an experience of lack in our lives. So shifting from that kind of thinking to finding ways to be of service reveals that despite any challenge that we might be going through, despite any difficulty, or despite you know, seeing that there are certain things that we don't have right now that maybe one day we would like to draw into our lives, you know, some greater expression of love, some greater harmony in the workplace, whatever. Whatever challenge we're going through, we still have something to give. You know, we tend to be barraged in our culture by messages uh, about needing to be more, needing to have more in order to be happy. And when we buy into them, you know, that just causes us to feel lacking all the time. And finding ways to be of service, I think it can help to bring us back to center. So while on the one hand, we still look at ways to care for ourselves, to nurture ourselves as needed so we can be healthy physically and emotionally, but it also allows us to honor that part of God's nature in us that seeks to give and to share so that we create a balance between the giving and receiving. And I believe that ultimately it blesses us because when we find ways to be of service, we're aligning with our spiritual nature of love. And it helps us to sense that we always have something good in us to give. We can't be sharing of ourselves, you know, trying, you know, calling forth generosity, calling forth kindness, calling forth any form of love or sharing something that brings peace to others. We can't give those things without experiencing them for ourselves. We're calling up those aspects of God's nature in us and then sharing them with others. And you know, this idea of being of service, being beneficial to us, has been supported by medical science. There have been studies that show that those who find ways to be of service tend to experience greater joy and fulfillment that it is an incredible antidote to depression, and that it creates a greater sense of connect connectedness to others. When we're thinking about things that we can do that help others, we, we feel connected. So I wanted to look at the idea, though. So I, we're talking about Veterans Day and some really great sacrifices, honoring those who've been willing to make really, really great sacrifices for us. And as inspiring as those great acts of service may be, I don't think that we have to always look at that wow factor, that, you know, that hero that Tina sang about that lies in us doesn't have to always be performing grand heroic acts, that there's a sense of heroism too in you know, calling forth goodness and doing something for someone else that may seem you know, like a simple act, but somehow it lifts them up. In that moment, we are their hero. You know, these smaller acts may not get the attention that some of the other acts do. They, those, those larger acts may make the headlines or be broadcast via different media, but I think it's important for us to realize that we have opportunities to be in sacred service all the time. There are simple ways that we can be a hero to another in their time of need. I think any gesture of love that has the intention of doing something positive for others is sacred. You know, it's, it's an expression of God's love. Any love that we feel, any love that we share is God's love. That's the only source of love. And you know, metaphysician and author uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson 
said that there is no great or no small to the soul that maketh them all. In other words, in God, God doesn't see, you know, one act of love as so great and another act of love as lesser. And uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta, better known to many as Mother Teresa, also told us there are no great acts, just acts performed with great love. And I think the more we're aware of our capacity to share love, to share different aspects of God's nature in our daily life in simple ways, then it becomes second nature to us. And we reap the blessings of feeling aligned with that vibration of love as we move through our daily life. So we, we become more conscious of how it's always there. And so I think that um, holidays like today, where we honor how others have been and those who are currently are of service to us, can, it can awaken us to the capacity we all have to give of ourselves in day-to-day -day life. I think we give great meaning and we honor those who have made large sacrifices by our willingness to continually find ways to be of service to others. You know, the world would be a lot better place if we were all doing that. And I was reminded recently of the story of a man who would show up every day at the nursing home where his wife was located. She was suffering from very advanced Alzheimer's and she didn't even recognize him anymore. And one of the um, nurses in the nursing home told him one day, she said, you know, I'm amazed, I don't know how you do it, that even though she doesn't even know who you are anymore, you still show up. And he looked at her and he says, she may not know who I am, but I know who she is. Tell me that isn't a little bit of a heroic act. What a simple and yet profound way to share of God's love, that his attention wasn't on how he wasn't, you know, being recognized and she didn't know who he was and didn't, um, you know, remember all the things he shared. It wasn't about what he wasn't getting from her. It's that he knew her as his beloved and could still show up in that way to be there with her. And I, you know, that's where we can look at, you know, that happened to make it into, uh, I, I believe that was in Chicken Soup for the Soul. It was, but it was in some book that I know I read, but there are any number of acts like that that no one ever hears about, but they're profound, they're sacred. You know, I, I got to witness in my mom after she had had her stroke and she was confined to a wheelchair. Uh, she had expressive aphasia. She was very dependent and she'd been very independent before that, but she suddenly became very dependent on others. But my mom, you know, she just had such a gracious, gracious nature. And I remember at one point she had said to me, you know, I don't know why I'm still here. Because, you know, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, I'm dependent on others, I have nothing to give. And so I made a point to point out to her in the facility where she was, there were a lot of people that were struggling with different forms of depression. And there was one woman in particular that was very depressed a lot of the time. And when I would bring my mom in the wheelchair by her, this woman's face would light up. That just my mom's presence was something that she just, she loved her. And I pointed it out to my mom. I said, every time we do that, every time you stop and smile at this woman, you lift her out of her depression. You are contributing. And she also, I pointed out how she was one of the few people in that facility that was always, always thanking the staff there and making them feel so appreciated. Uh, and so they would 
of course, give back to her. They would bring some of their home cooking to her and all kinds of things. But again, when I pointed out to her, look at how you are making a difference, that she was being in service to others while they were being of service to her, that changed her whole outlook. It gave her a much greater experience of life, feeling that she had something still to share. So, you know, I would invite us to look at, in these times where, you know, we may all be feeling a little overwhelmed with all the changes, the adjustments, the challenging situations of the world, to just ask ourselves, what are, what are ways that we can be of service to others? Just simple acts of kindness and caring. You know, right now, just a phone call, checking in with someone, how they're doing, just smiles on the street. I know when I go for my walk, it's so nice because in this time of isolation, when someone else is walking across the street, just to wave to one another and acknowledge one another. As we perform these acts of service and kindness and recognize that we're expressing God's love, God's givingness that's always in us, and acknowledge the simple kindnesses that others, you know, uh, perform for us and recognize that that is God's love moving through them. I think we then have a greater sense of that sacred presence of the divine that's in and around us at all times. So I'm going to invite you to turn your attention inward for a moment. And call to mind any experience you've had where someone went out of their way to support you. Someone who made your needs a priority. And allow yourself to feel the vibration of love, God's love, in which we're all interconnected. And it was that love that motivated that individual to take that action. And now bring your, to mind any experience where you've given of your time or other resources to be of service to someone else and just felt the goodness of doing that. And again, recognize that the vibration of love that motivated you towards, toward this action was God's love unfolding through you. And in this place of feeling the sacredness of giving and graciously receiving, imagine yourself finding ways throughout the day to share of that love, offering kindness and service to others. and envision yourself becoming more aware of all the little acts of kindness that come your way and just feeling the beauty of them and appreciating them. And allow yourself to feel the sacredness of God's love that's ever present to guide us to new ways to serve each other and to graciously receive and accept love and kindness from each other. And so from this place, please join me in knowing the following truths for all beings everywhere. Knowing that there is only one life, God's life, and that life is the life out of which all creation comes into being and that lives in through and as all things. That is the life that animates my being. It is the life that animates the being of each and every one gathered for this service this evening, every being everywhere. And knowing that God is ever present in every being, in every moment, in every situation, let us know together that that nature of God is unchanging 
it is eternal, it is constant, that in our human experience, we're constantly experiencing change, but the love, the light, the intelligence, the beauty, the wholeness and creativity of God is always there at the center of our being throughout this lifetime and beyond. It is this one life of God that keeps us connected eternally. And it is something we can always turn to experience goodness in some new way when some form of good leaves us on this human plane. Let us remember together that that vibration of God is one of perfect health and wholeness. It is the vibration out of which all healing comes into being. It is the solution to every human situation. So even in these times of a pandemic and other illnesses that, others, that many face, we know that there is a divine intelligence that is there to reveal the pathway into health and wholeness, whatever it may be. Let us remember together that this vibration of God is an infinite creativity that is always finding ways to be creative, to give of itself through us, and that we are guided by it to give in our unique ways that are of value to others, that are of service to others, and that we reap the benefits of just feeling that value and appreciation. Let us also remember that this life of God is infinite. It owes nothing of lack and limitation. Those are human ideas that we impose upon God. So as we open up to that idea of God's infinite givingness and receiving this being part of us, we see an expansion in our ability to experience and express God's abundance. And let us also remember that that core nature of the divine is love, that each of us has this vibration of love in us that as we open to it, we move into a greater capacity to love ourselves and love others, to see the face of God, the face of the Christ in each and every being that we encounter. And so knowing that that impulse of God's love is always for greater good, let us set our individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us remember we are feeling the vibration of God, God's will to have more and more of its nature revealed here on earth. And we know that that, that power of God is one that can bring forth goodness out of nothingness. So as we know that God is at the center of all these situations, Good is revealed, and together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart filled with gratitude for this knowingness that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.